How's it everyone? I'm Simon G with Sir Trek Tonics. In this video expedition we will examine how fast space travel is in the Expanse Universe and the amount of transit time between planets in the solar system. But first let's look at fusion power in the drive systems that propel these spacecraft from over 300 years in the future. Fusion power replicates the sun energy process of hydrogen conversion but on a drastically smaller scale. The reactors generate large amounts of energy relative to their size with little or none of the radioactive emissions or side effects. This energy process needs deuterium to stabilize the reaction. Yet this element is extremely rare on Earth but is abundant on the lunar surface. Moon rocks have been bombarded with solar radiation for millions of years that forms helium-3 isotope deposits due to the moon's lack of an atmosphere. In contrast to the Earth that reflects this process from accumulating on the surface and the continents. This makes the lunar surface rich with helium-3 deposits which can be refined into deuterium to stabilize fusion energy leading to the first generation of fusion reactors in the late 21st century supplying Earth with an unlimited and clean source of energy replacing fossil fuels. This technology powered spacecraft with sublight fusion drives propelling ships to a max speed of 1 million miles per hour, cutting the journey to Mars from a matter of months down to only 14 days, and pioneering the first colonial settlements on another planet. Over the next 100 years, second generation fusion technology increased velocities to nearly 2% the speed of light, with a more advanced helium-3 ref refinement process producing tritidium isotopes to further stabilize and increase reactor productivity. The 22nd century utilized helium-4 proton-based fusion power and drive cores, ushering in the third generation of technology, increasing to 3% the speed of light with a sustained apex velocity of 20 million miles per hour. At the dawn of the 23rd century in the Expanse timeline, Solomon Epstein retrofitted a proton fusion reactor on his personal spaceship to increase productivity. The result propelled the craft to exceed max velocities, opening the door for the fourth generation of fusion drive advancements. The Expanse books and series are rather vague on the details and specifications of this futuristic technology because it is within the realm of possibility, but a detailed theoretical explanation is beyond description. For the sake of simplicity, we will label this the Gen 4 Epstein drive that utilizes helium-4 proton energy released by ultra-efficient fuel pellets and reaction mass. This enhanced drive technology could reach over 5% the speed of light inside the solar system and near 30% sublight velocity on the Nabu interstellar generational ship designed for a 100 year journey to another star system. Longer distances increases the overall speeds. Now for ship velocities unfolding in the expanse timeline during the mid 24th century. A shuttle from Earth to Luna would take 6 hours, roughly the same amount of time it takes to fly from New York to London in a modern day airliner. When considering interplanetary space travel, the primary factor is sustained g-force or inertia of gravity against the human body from constant acceleration. For the average person, one third g is a maximum safe amount. A physically fit adult trained for space travel and in good health can undergo a one half g of long range acceleration. Adding a pressurized suit and gravity fluids, that same adult can handle 3 quarters to 1 G and up to 10 to 15 Gs of limited burst speed. But for this breakdown, we will focus on a constant 1 third G burn acceleration. The next factor is distance. Spacecraft can only obtain an apex velocity with the same amount of time to slow down and shed the speed so the ship can achieve or maintain position at the intended destination. This max speed is referred to as the flip point or a reverse burn. Each transit between planets has a top speed limit so the spacecraft does not overshoot and miss the gravitational window. Distance is commonly measured in astronomical units or the average orbit from Earth to the Sun at 93 million miles. The travel time used between planets will also be average orbital separations. Mars is 48.6 million miles from Earth at 0.52 or 1 half AU. The travel time at a 1 third G sustained burn is 7 days. 
the apex velocity is 0.3% the speed of light at the halfway distance mark of 24 million miles after traveling 2 million miles per hour after 3.5 days of acceleration. Next, the ship cuts thrust and maneuvers 180 degrees facing the drive plume towards Mars. Over the next three days, a deceleration burn reduces speed until the ship reaches Mars orbit, slowing to 50,000 miles per hour. The first half of the transit increases thrust by 24,000 miles per hour, and the last half de decreases velocity by the same increments during the reverse burn. Earth to the asteroid belt takes 9 days with a peak burn of 1% sublight speed. The trip to Jupiter spans 11 days at a distance of 391 million miles with a max speed of 1.25% sublight thrust. As the overall distance increases, so does the apex velocity at the halfway mark, with greater deceleration burns to safely reduce speed at one third g of inertia force against the cruise. Earth to Saturn takes 14 days at 793.7 million miles or 8.5 AUs reaching a max velocity of 3.2% the speed of light. Near the outer solar system of Uranus and Neptune, the distance from Earth surpasses a couple billion miles, allowing the Gen 4 Epstein drives to reach velocities just over 5% the speed of light. Uranus transit time spans 25 days with a distance of 1.9 billion miles or 20.4 AUs. The furthest distance on a standard trade route is Neptune at 2.7 billion miles from Earth or 30 AUs, with a transit time of 32 days reaching 5.3% the speed of light or 35.5 million miles per hour with a flip point at 1.85 billion miles. In the expanse, another form of space travel expanded more upon in the books is automated spacecraft with unmanned freighters, tugs, and drones that can sustain a constant 10G acceleration. At those speeds, the ship would reach Mars in 24 hours, Jupiter in 2 days, and the transit to Neptune in only 6 days, decreasing interplanetary durations by a factor of 5 with an apex velocity of 25% sublight speed or 168 million miles per hour. Although autonomous freighters are easy prey for pirates during deceleration, without crews to defend the ship and auto track defense systems can be easily bypassed. So this ultra fast transit method is only utilized for emergencies or sent to well defended locations with drones and auto tugs being the most commonly used form of autonomous space travel. So there you have it ladies and gentle nerds, a time scale chart for interplanetary space travel velocities in the Expanse Universe. Keep in mind this is a compilation from the books and the made for television series as both sources vary from one another on transit space travel time scales. Also keep in mind these calculations are estimates as I'm not a mathematician, physicist or engineer, I'm just a mega nerd that places the Expanse Universe on the top of my geek pyramid. Thanks for watching. As always, my videos are 100% free with no donations required. It is greatly appreciated if you hit the like thumbs button and subscribe for more sci-fi video breakdowns and expeditions. You can also hit share if you made it this far to make a starving nerd smile. Peace out. Yeah!